What's up everybody, Dustin from DC Media. This is another part of our beginner's guide on how to select the parts for your PC builds. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a few things you need to consider when looking at motherboards. And we know there's a lot out there, so what really makes a difference when you're buying a motherboard? Um, does anything increase performance? Uh, what about future-proofing? Well, let's get into it. So ideally, when you're looking at motherboards, you've already kind of figured out probably the case, so you kind of have an idea of what size motherboard to get, and you probably already know the CPU you're wanting to get, so you have an idea of what socket you need for the motherboard. The socket is going to be in relation to the CPU, as uh, that's going to be the only style of CPU that goes in it. So, you know, 1150, you know, LGA 1150, LGA 1151, AM4 on AMD, and we'll get into the CPU choices uh, and the idea behind what CPU to get in another video. That's not for this video. So one of the main things to look at is to make sure you're getting the correct socketed motherboard. You know, it's not gonna do any good if you're getting an LGA 1150 and you have an LGA 1151 CPU. It's not gonna work. So that's just one of the first and quick things you can look at to make sure you're narrowing down your selection on what motherboard you can get. The next thing is obviously, like we just talked about, the size of the motherboard. Full, T full ATX, micro, mini, whatever it might be, that's gonna be dictated by the case selection. So we wanna make sure that the motherboard you're gonna purchase is gonna fit in the case you decided to go with. Again, it'll do no good if you have you know, an ITX motherboard supported case and you are only going to be looking at full ATX motherboards. It's incompatible, it's not going to work. It's not gonna fit, it's physically gonna to be too large. So if you're not sure, you can always go back and look at the case specifications. They'll tell you what motherboards will fit inside the case normally. And the same thing goes for motherboards and CPUs. Just because it has the correct socket, it might need a BIOS update or something along those lines to work correctly with the, with the CPU that you're going to be looking at. So make sure you do due diligence and look at manufacturer's websites to make sure you're getting the correct, case, uh, correct motherboard for the CPU and the correct size that you need. Now, the next thing you're going to consider, or you should consider really, would be how much RAM are you going to end up needing? Most everybody is probably only going to need a dual channel setup, and it could. some other boards have a single DIMM slot per channel, which means it has two DIMM slots. Some will have up to two DIMM slots per channel, so you have a total of four DIMM slots. Now, if you're in the X99 platform, this video is probably not for you, but if you are, you could have you know, quad channel and, and obviously up to eight stem slots in an X99 platform. So make sure you're kind of looking at the idea of what are you doing today? What are you purchasing today? And do you plan to upgrade? You know, are you only running, you know, a single 16 gigabyte stick of DDR4? If you are, do you plan on running a second? Or maybe you have a kit of uh, an eight and an eight, but you have two, you know, do you want to, you know, go to 32 later on? So you're wanting a motherboard that supports uh, a four DIMM slots on a dual channel memory setup so that way you can you know buy two more DIMMs later down the road. Future proofing really isn't a thing, but that is more of an idea of, uh, so you don't have to purchase another motherboard later down the road. And there's no point in spending money twice if you don't have to. Now, after all that, you know, so we know that you got the correct motherboard size, we know that you have the correct socket for your CPU, and we know that you have the idea of what RAM you wanna get. So you have you know how many DIMM slots you're going to be utilizing, or you might be utilizing in the future. Now the only other two things that really make a difference is going to be the addition, the extras, the add-ons, um, heat sinks and whatnot don't matter. Uh, they have no bearing on performance in most cases. Now they could if you're water cooling and you're looking at the new Z270 motherboards and having you know integrated water cooling options and things like that. But realistically, for the everyday performance, you're not gonna see any difference in your Z170 motherboard or Z270 motherboard or an H series or a B series motherboard. You're probably not gonna see, well, it's not probably, you're not going to see a difference. The only time you're gonna see a difference is if you can utilize a motherboard that has an ability to have a faster RAM. So you have to look at the extras that it's coming with. You know, are you getting a correct number of SATA ports? Do you have enough 
uh, M.2 support? Do you have the correct PCIe support? Uh, does it support SLI and or Crossfire if you're going to need those options? Um, you know, so that really is the only thing that's going to dictate what motherboard you realistically need outside of if you're buying a K SKU Intel chip. Then you need a Z series motherboard to ensure you can actually do the overclocking. Otherwise, honestly, you're just kind of wasting your money if you get an overclocking motherboard and a non overclocking CPU or an overclocking CPU and a non overclocking motherboard. Now, with all that said, there is a caveat to this. If you are getting a Z series or a Z series motherboard for overclocking purpose, and you're getting a cheap CPU for now just so you can get your PC up and running and get gaming or editing or whatever you're doing, and you plan to change CPUs down the road to maybe, you know, a case skewed CPU, there's nothing wrong with that. That's called an upgrade cycle, and it's not bad to have a plan. However, overclocking is not for everybody, and if it's not for you, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, and there's no reason to buy a Z series motherboard or to have a K SKU, you know, CPU. You can have them if you want them, just not really needed. That money could be saved and put somewhere else in the PC build. And the only other facet of a motherboard is make sure it looks good. Make sure it looks as aesthetically pleasing as you want it to be. Now, if you're going for RGB and this and that, you're going to pay for it. You're not going to get that free of charge. Uh, but, you know, you could probably get a couple color selections, you know, black, red, you know, there are some white motherboards out there, um, black and yellow, black and blue. Uh, those are some pretty common color combos, maybe in black and orange if you look hard enough. So make sure it looks how you want it to look. With PCs being, you know, uh, an extension of ourselves, we want to make sure that it works for you. You know, what I find aesthetically pleasing, you might not. And that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure you're spending the money where you want to spend it. And for everyone out there who's like, oh, you need a Z70 mother, a Z Z series motherboard to, you know, have the best performance. No, no, you don't. Um, the only thing you need to consider when you're looking at the best possible performances is, would be, make sure it can support whatever frequency RAM that you're going to wind up utilizing. You know, are you going to use 3,000 or 3,200, 3,600, whatever you're going to be utilizing? Make sure the motherboard supports it. You know, a quick. You know, Google check will let you know. You can probably get to the manufacturer's website and it'll tell you, hey, we support this. Um, and a lot of times it'll support X, rant, you know, X frequency, but you can overclock it on top of that if you're into overclocking. And if you're not, no problem. Um, but other than that, the bargain basement motherboards, as long as it works for the RAM, the CPU, it's the correct uh, motherboard size, as long as all that's correct, and you know, you're know you utilizing the new DDR4, probably, if you're building a new CPU. Um, but as long as all that's there, you're not going to notice an FPS difference. Um, and if you do, it's likely because it didn't support a higher frequency uh, dim slots for the RAM, as opposed to holding your CPU back. You know, Gone are the days of yesteryear when we had to worry about bus speeds and things like that. We don't have to worry about that anymore. It's all pretty much standardized across the board, so the differences are minimal. And there's no reason to spend extra money if you don't need it. But with that being said, guys, I hope this helps some of you kind of get an idea maybe of what you're looking at for a motherboard. And, you know, just because it says gaming doesn't make it any better than a non-gaming motherboard. You don't have to buy any products that say gaming to have a gaming PC. You know, that's just some marketing gimmicks that all the manufacturers utilize to get you guys to spend more money. Anyway, guys, consider subscribing if you liked the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. Comment in the section below. You know, what do you guys uh, look at when you're looking at motherboards? What do you consider? Um, you, you know, do you pick out your motherboard before you get a CPU? Do you get a CPU for a motherboard? Is aesthetics more bigger for you, RGB? Whatever it might be, let us know in the comment section below what your top five things are whenever you're looking for a motherboard. But with all that, guys, again, thank you for watching the video. Thanks for sticking it out through us through all this. And uh, hey, we'll see you in the next video.